Hello there, church family. This is Pastor Eric from Whitehorse. So grateful for the opportunity that we have to stay connected through this online stream service. I wanted to jump online here and remind you of a few ways that we can stay connected through the, our, our stream services. The first one is you can always email your testimony, email your pictures, or you can even text them and use the links that we're displaying here on the screen below. And also using your social media channels. Use the hashtag WHEC Stay Connected. We'll display it here at the screen. Um, and that is a great way for you to post a picture, maybe write out a quick testimony on your Facebook wall, send in a comment through YouTube, whatever way you're connecting with us, we wanna hear your testimony. So make sure that you like, make sure that you share, make sure that you comment, tell us what's ministering to you. And remember, share the word of the Lord, share your faith with somebody that you know. God bless you and stay tuned for more. Thank you for joining us today. The Lord bless you. Many people ask us, how can we give and how can we be involved? Go online, whcc.net, and you will find ways to give, and you will be blessed in the giving, and we thank you for your thoughtfulness and prayer. You can send a check by mail to 1780 Cumberland Avenue, West Lafayette, 47906, Attention Whitehorse Christian Center, or by phone. You can call the office, 765-477-1111. We're here to help you. Or if you're local, you can come by in person and drop it off, and we would enjoy seeing you. We want to thank you for your faithful stewardship and all you've done so well with what God has put in your hands. Your giving helps us to maintain, sustain, and continue for generation after generation the vision that God has put in our heart. As you give, remember that you share in our mission and our mission statement of reaching the nations, of feeding and providing food for friends, and much more. Thanks for all you do. Enjoy the word. Enjoy worship. Enjoy the service. And may God touch your heart. Thank you. God is good. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Our circumstances may change. Our situation may change. They may become more difficult or more easy. But the God that brought you out of the last one that was too difficult... It's the same God that's alive and able to bring you out of this one that's too difficult. But the difficulty of your situation makes it all God's. <laughs> he says the impossibility of the situation means it requires God to step into the midst of whatever's going on to bring you out because you cannot bring yourself out of your circumstances. Oh, praise the Lord. Your circumstances are not bigger than God, stronger than God, mightier than God, or more powerful than God. <laughs> you can have the whole world against you and just have God with you, and it's more than the whole world against you. He stands strong. He stands powerful. He stands as a victorious king, a victorious God that does not lose a battle, that's always seeking for our victory in all life circumstances and situations. Oh, praise the Lord. I was sitting there getting ready, and he told me hey, I need to say something, but I don't want to say but praise the Lord, pray for me. I don't really want to go into that subject matter. I don't think I'm ready. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day mm, that you have made, and we shall rejoice and be glad of it. I will say of the Lord, you are our refuge, our fortress, our God in whom we trust. We lean not into our own understanding, but in all our ways we acknowledge you, and you shall direct our path. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that will lead us and guide us into all truth tonight, truth that shall make us free. We thank you also for the blood. We are blood-bought people. Hallelujah. Thank you for the blood applied to everything you've given us stewardship over. And you said you give us angels for the heirs of salvation who we are. Thank you for them in our midst. And you said where two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I seek God when I first come in, especially I seek most of the day, but 
when I get ready to get up, I, I need to hear him because whatever I type doesn't mean that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> that's not always what he has planned for me. So I am learning from my years past, as my old bishop says to me, he said, it'll come a day that you will not even look at your notes. It'll be written inside you. And it'll flow from the inside out of you. <laughs> And a lot of time, I probably get half the page really out. Uh, but praise the Lord, God is good, isn't he? So I'm going to see what he's going to say. Praise the Lord. And I already start saying, but, you know, I think all of us have been walking through changes. And uh, changes sometimes can be difficult. Hmm. We don't like change. We, we are more comfortable with things staying the same. <laughs> and because we don't like change, sometimes we struggle in the process because we don't understand why is this coming in my life at this time. Praise the Lord. Ooh, praise the Lord. So I think in this last... Uh, Maybe this last year, you can say, especially as my mother died. I didn't know her death would affect me like it has. It affected me in a way that in my mind, I wasn't even thinking. But I told my wife, I said, mm. I can't go home no more. It was an ending that I did not look for. An ending that I did not want because as long as she lived here, there was always someone that can always take me back to where I began. But at her death, there was no one else. No brothers, no sisters. There was nothing left. And I began to have to deal with the change and confront my own emotions in the matter. I don't know if you've ever been in that place where the person that died finalized something that was absolute that you were not expecting to take place. That person that knew you from when you were in the womb with them, now no longer is there anything or anybody. <laughs> but it affected me and I had to deal and I have been dealing with it and God has been bringing me through it but it's really been different it's been totally different the emotions, the feelings whatever may come but this is where a pastor called me this morning texted me this morning I should say and said he wanted me to minister this morning so I asked him, what do you want me to minister? He told me, whatever I want. I said, that's dangerous. Uh, <laughs> it's like someone telling me, just take your time, do all the time you want. <laughs> no, you don't tell me that. <laughs> but praise the Lord anyway. I uh, said back to him, I said, let me sit back. The scripture I've been dealing with, and it's found in Luke where I'm going to go tonight. Luke 22, 31 through 32. And it talks about... <laughs> I'll just read it and then I'll go into the other. 31 says, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And I realized the fact that Satan desires through our mishaps and situations to sift us like wheat, 
to overcome us in our circumstances of life that come. It rains on the just and the unjust the same, but there's one God that delivers. He stays the same as well. And so tonight, I want you to think about this thought as I begin to talk, is the fact that the faith of God, it shall not fail you. I don't care how much your back is against the wall. I don't care if you don't know what to do or how to take the next step. It matters not. It doesn't matter if you don't know the right answer. The fact is, the faith of God will bring you through. Your circumstance will become a stepping stone to another level in God that you have never been before. The suffering of that moment cannot be compared to the manifestation of his glory in your life as you have gone through the suffering. You know, suffering is when something happens and you can't change it, you can't do nothing about it, and you mainly just sulk. That's what you mainly do because you want to do something. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, sometimes you want to hurt somebody. Praise the Lord. No, most of you don't hear that. You want to help them out. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But you can't because it's not what God would want you to do. And of course, if you got a good wife, she's sitting there saying, nope. Don't you dare. Praise the Lord. Mercy has been given. <laughs> but it's good anyhow. But this same faith is there for us. We must realize this in these times because everything is changing. Today will be one way, tomorrow will be another way, and the next day will be another way. Nothing is sure except God. Only God is a surety. Nothing else is assured. Because he changes not. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He doesn't move with circumstances, but he moves circumstances for what he wants done. Every person is valuable. Let me say it again. <laughs> Every person is valuable. Every person. <laughs> God's bigger than your situation. Let me say that again. God is bigger than whatever situation you are facing today. He is larger, he's more than, he's more than capable. He is God. He is bigger. <laughs> oh. He requires you to do this. You be steadfast, unmovable. Where? In him. Wow. 1 Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Let me say that again. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor, listen to this, is not in vain in the Lord. Sometimes have you felt like what you do is in vain? Do you feel sometimes it ain't accomplishing nothing? Do you feel like sometimes you're not reaching the goal that you feel like you should be able to reach? But I want to tell you today, always abound in the work of the Lord, the fruit of your labor many times you are not able to see or recognize. But if you do it with the right heart, God will produce and bring a harvest back to you. <laughs> when I went to college, I didn't know, well, I didn't know some things, but there was one girl that was there, a good friend of mine, and she sent me a Facebook message, I think it was. And in the Facebook message, she began to thank me for my walk. <laughs> I didn't think I did a very good job, but praise the Lord. But she thanked me for my walk there in college, for it's my walk that caused her to turn toward God in herself. 
I said, you don't know what you're doing and who's watching you and where you're making the difference at. Oh, praise the Lord. Human behavior studies show this, that people do not basically resist change. This is this, they resist being changed. We don't like being changed. Whatever's coming into our life, we don't like it what it requires of us to change because we don't want to change. Every new idea goes through three phases. It will not work. It will cost too much. And I thought it was a good idea all along. <laughs> change is a process in which we go through. But we must understand the question that is in our hearts today is when and how much will I have to change? But you must realize nothing stays the same except the fact that change is always present. Wow. Philippians 1 6 says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which had begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, until the day of the ending of your life. He will perform it. Your mishaps, this is one thing he always told me, he said, the righteous fall seven times, but they get back up. So you don't define yourself by the fall because if you define yourself by your fall, you will stay in the ditch. The only difference between a successful person and a failure is the amount of failures or mishaps they have acquired. The successful person has had hundreds of failures. <laughs> but the failure has only had one. Because the first time he fell into the ditch, he defined himself by the failure and never got back up from falling on his face. The difference between the successful person and him is that he kept getting up despite the fact he missed it. And every time he got up, he gained something that he didn't have before he failed. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. He gained something that he didn't have before the falling on his face. But the promise is this, God will raise you back up. When everybody says you're through, when everybody says you're done, when everybody feel like you ain't got no more to give, God comes up because he is the resurrection and the power. And the resurrection and the power lives in you. You confound the devil and all his ages because you stand back up and they start to scratch their head trying to figure out how can he get back up after what I have done to him or her. There is getting up with the Christians, but there's also falling down. He is the resurrection. <laughs> and he lives in me and you. We want this perfect life where we never miss it. Now, you're going to miss it and you're going to miss it terribly. But the key is this. Don't define yourself by the mishap. Don't determine who and what you are because you missed it. Your intention was never to miss it. Your intention was never to fall down. Your intention was never to miss the ball. Your intention was not to miss the throw. But you did. Now what? What was it you were supposed to learn? What was it you were supposed to take with you when you got back up? What was it that God wanted you to understand? 
What was it he wanted you to see that until that failure came, you couldn't see? Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, sometimes you have to take it all the way to the end to see. I remember in playing basketball, some of my shots required me to take it to the very edge of traveling. But never once did I ever travel. But I had to have a confidence to take it all the way to the very edge. Sometimes men would be passing me by in the air, and all I would see was the goal. I would count one, two, three. That means three people had just passed me by, and I would lay it up. And then I would touch the ground. And there would be the referee standing right there. <laughs> what happens? Sometimes you have to take it that far. You have to trust God to go all the way to the very end. Because it's at the end you get what you need. Oh, praise the Lord. Not all change is improvement, but without change, there can be no improvement. I'll say it again. Not all change is improvement, but without change, there can be no improvement. Max Dupree said, in the end, it is important to remember that we cannot become what we need to be. Listen to this. By remaining what we are. <laughs> We're changed from faith to faith, from glory to glory. There's a change always going on. This change we have been going through in America, it's no surprise with God. God wanted to change you ahead of the curve, but you got stuck <laughs> and didn't want to move. Oh, praise the Lord. We get comfortable, we Americans get comfortable of what has been. And don't ask us to leave that comfortable place. But in order to become what God wants you to become, you must leave what you have become comfortable with that God led you in in the years past, but now that new place must come to bring about a new change in you, a new understanding, a new power, a new authority, a new anointing that you can't get by staying where you were. <laughs> Second Corinthians 3.18, that we all, with open faces, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. You have not reached the full glory of what God meant for you to be. You are changing, and circumstances and situations are the, that which God is using to form you, to force you, to design you, to come forth in a way you never have. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. God is good, isn't he? <laughs> He's the one that's turning up the fire. He's the one that's putting the fire on you. <laughs> and so as you put fire on gold, you turn it up. And you put this stuff, I think it's called flux in there. I might be saying it right, but those don't know what I'm talking about, no. And they put it in there, and what it does, it attached to all the particles that are not gold. And they bring them up as the heat come up. And, the, <laughs> and it says in the Bible, he stands there as a purifier, and he scrapes off all the impurities. But the fire must be hot. You can't become pure because what he wants to happen is the, 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 <laughs> the goldsmiths, what he wants to have happen is when he look at the gold, he wants to see the reflection of himself. <laughs> 
but he got to get rid of the purities, impurities. That's why your circumstances are so on flame and on fire. You said, make me, Lord. Do what you want with me. You know, when you're feeling good that day. <laughs> and then when he actually starts to do it, you would say, oh, Lord, I didn't mean that. Whoa, you touching somebody you want to let go of. You said I could. Can you turn down this fire? No. It says in the fire, you learn not to judge him unrighteously. <laughs> We've been in a fire. Have you been judging God wrongly? Oh, praise the Lord. Okay. Let me keep going. Much more time. Okay. Change means to cause to turn or pass from one state to another. To alter or make different, to vary in external form or in essence. As to change the color or shape of a thing. God is designing you to be changed. He's designing me so I will change. So I will look like him and not like me. That when he looks at me as he purifies me and sets the fire, he said, come to me and buy gold put under the fire. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> I like this statement. People change when they hurt enough. They have to change. Learn enough, they want to change. Receive enough, they are able to change. I'll say it again. People change when they hurt enough, <laughs> they have to change. Woo. Learn enough, they want to change. Receive enough. They are able to change. Change can be seen as either revolutionary, something totally different from what has been, for surely this has been a revolutionary time. Nothing has ever come to, our, to the world that's affected the whole world to shut the whole world down with the question of it even coming back. <laughs> or evolutionary, a refinement of what has been. It surely has not been a refinement. <laughs> it is usually easy to present change as simply refinement. But when you have it revolutionary, that means something major. That, see, to me it says God is trying to do something to his church. But the key to our success is that we can't let go of the faith. <laughs> he said, I pray for you that in the midst of this difficulty, in the midst of this hardship, in the midst of this that's going around that you don't understand, that you wish was over last year, He said, I gave you my faith. I pray for you that my faith fails you not. <laughs> because whatever God got planned for you to come out, you'll never be the same again. Never. But whatever it is, it's going to be better than what you were. More than what you were. Better than what you ever could be. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Whenever chain is imminent, the question on everybody's mind is, how will this affect me? It has been a question on all people's minds, especially the church of today, especially in America. How is this going to affect me? 
Time is most precious commodity for many people. Whenever change is about to happen, we all, we, we all look to see how it will affect our time. Usually we conclude that increased change will be fine if it does not increase our time and commitment. I'm very sorry to tell you, but it surely has. It has caused you to be committed in ways you never have been before. It's caused you to walk in a way that you never have been before. It required a commitment of your time that you never had before. Ugh. When the cost of change is time, many will resist the change. People will not change until they perceive that the advantages of changing outweigh the disadvantages of continuing in the way things are. I believe that last statement is a God statement in which he is saying to us, people of mine, <laughs> oh, it's time to change. You cannot see and perceive the need of your change in this hour and this time. For you have come comfortable from where you were. I have shaken you to bring about a newness in you. It's not the fact that it's not in you, but you don't recognize it being in you. But I am calling you forth to be something that you never imagined you could be. And I'm using every circumstance around you to cause you to cry out, to moan, to do things you never have before, to even sometimes question where you're at. Have you had to question where you're at? I have had to done that before. I had to question, what do I really believe? Do I believe this is real or do I believe it's not real? What am I standing on? God is not afraid of our question. Because <laughs> he's a God that will answer you. And you will be stronger than what you were before you asked the questions. You will come out better than you ever had before. But most of us are scared to ask God these type questions. <laughs> People will not change until they perceive that the advantage of changing outweighs the disadvantage. To God, it does. He needs us to change. No more will come upon you than what you can bear. You just don't like it. Who does? Change means traveling in uncharted waters. And this causes our insecurities to rise. Therefore, many people are more comfortable with the old problems than with the new solutions. God wants to give us new solutions. I'll say it again. God wants to give us new solutions. <laughs> but he has to have us experience the uncomfortability of our insecurities. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'd like to thank God for Jim Bouchon. Wow. He may not know how big it was for him to come to Danville and get us. I had been there hours, and no one would help me. I was getting ready to spend a lot of money. I was going to rent a car. Told my truck, told my car. And he said, no. People wouldn't even go out and look at my car. Mother. 
But after the trip, I had to make a decision. And because Jim loved us, I could make the decision. I will hold nothing against them. So you don't know until you reach a place that you're vulnerable, that you're hurt, that you don't like it. You don't know what's in you until you get touched. Jesus. Wow. I turned to my wife and said, I hate my prejudice. I don't care what color. Oh, I hate it. But one thing I do know, it touched something in me that I knew I had to deal with and don't let it stay with me. <laughs> See, that connection to his faith promised to me to bring me through because the devil would have liked to sift me as wheat. Oh, I went to three or four places. <sighs> Sometimes they brought three men out at the same time. I knew what they were telling me. <sighs> Other times they said, well, we can't do nothing until Tuesday. We can't fix it. <laughs> but you didn't look at it. Ooh, praise the Lord. So one place we sat out there waiting for Jim to come get my car. So he was actually coming outside and he looked up and saw me. And he was out there working on everybody else's car. But I had to forgive him. See, uh, <laughs> I had to make a choice. I had every reason to stay where I was at. But that would not be fruitful change. I thank God there's a man like Jim Bouchon here and there's many others like that here. You have blessed us greatly, but that was designed. God orders your footsteps. <laughs> in other words, he's going to bring you in some places that you ain't comfortable with on purpose. But he says your heart determines your ways, Proverbs 16. He's putting a light on your heart to see, are you really free? Oh, praise the Lord. Woo. But pray. But I have prayed for thee. What did you pray? That no matter what my circumstances are, and no matter how they may hurt me, and no matter how much they may make me mad, he said, but my faith shall fail you not. <laughs> I don't know what kind of circumstances you find yourself in, but I have found myself in a lot of them. And I've watched God work. <laughs> but see, Satan wanted to do this to me. He wanted to sift me like wheat. He wanted to reduce me to nothing because of the people in that city. He wanted to take me back to where I came from when I was in Georgia. Your flesh still got the remembrance. Don't think it don't. But I had to make a choice. You know, you know how I can make that choice? I'll tell you how. Because of y'all. Because of what y'all showed me. And how you treated me. Oh, because you were my reference. You were that substance that says this. Not all of them that are, are that way. <laughs> There's some outstanding people. 
Okay, praise the Lord. How much more time I got? Okay. <laughs> I'm just trying to encourage you because Satan will come. It may be different for you, but I promise you he'll bring something around to you. And it will touch a place in you that you are vulnerable to. But God, Jesus said, but I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. Then the last part he says here, and when thou art converted, <laughs> go and strengthen thy brother. <laughs> Go and strengthen thy brother. <laughs> See, 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. I'm born of God. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That faith that's deposited within you. It says in the scripture that we all have a measure of faith. This is what God is saying. That's in Romans 12, 3. It says, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Faith is so important. This is what he's given. And it causes us to overcome the world. Whatever they're throwing at us. Ooh, hallelujah. Hebrews 11, 1 says this, Now faith is substance. I needed faith now, not next week. Past tense, of things hoped for. Future tense, the evidence of things not seen. The Amplifier says, Now faith is the assurance and confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of the, their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the uh, senses. Faith is my acceptance of God's fact over my circumstances. It always has its foundation in the past, but it manifests in the future. What relates to the future is hope rather than faith. Faith goes always, although faith often has its objective or goal in the future. Faith connects us to what is already settled in the past. It's mine. My victory is mine. It was already written before that day even happened. And faith connected me to my victor, victory. Ooh, help me, Lord God. See, when faith comes, God is giving something from himself that is, not, that is a part of him. It is for now. It is for the immediate time. Now faith is. Oh, Jesus. The Bible says, Hebrew 12, 2, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You don't make faith. He gives you faith. And when he gives you faith, he's already decided that that's for you before you even got into the situation. And faith connects you to the substance of what you need to bring into your situation so you can overcome the situation because it's yours to overcome because he wants you to because he's part of the faith of Jesus in you in the first place. Now faith is. Now faith is. He prayed for me and you that our faith fail not. It won't fail. Faith never fails. It never fails. It accomplished everything it's sent to do. <laughs> well, thank you, Lord God. Duh. Romans 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by also hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Galatians 5.22 tells you, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, and what? And faith. 
It's telling you where faith comes from. It comes from Christ. It comes from the fruit of the Spirit. It comes by hearing the Word of God. <laughs> faith comes. And when faith comes, God has already given permission for you to have the victory. Oh, Jesus. He doesn't give you faith if he does not already want you to have the victory. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. <laughs> and he gives it to you because he wants you to be victorious. <laughs> Help us, Lord God. We serve an awesome God. Oh, Jesus. Let me come to the end. I'm almost done. Whew. Jesus says, let us pass over unto the other side. That's the word. <laughs> Faith come by hearing, hearing the word of the Lord. The word was, let's go to the other side. God is speaking to us, church, tonight, and whoever's listening, let us go to the other side. Whatever that other side is, whatever it may encompass, let us go. And that same day when the eve was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, and even as he was in the ship, and there were also with him other little ships. The amazing thing about this story, you can read it later, is the fact that uh, water started to come in, and they began to, sh to sink. But the question is, I'll tell you this, the boat won't sink. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay. <laughs> because who is on the boat? <laughs> he's in the back asleep, but he's fully awake. Because he is on the boat, the boat can't sink. I don't care how much water has got into the boat. I don't care how bad it looks. It can't. Because he's there. It can't sink. So what I'm saying to you in closing, stay with the ship. Stay on the ship. Don't leave the ship. This is your home. Don't leave the ship. <laughs> stay on the boat. The boat is not going to sink no matter how bad it may look, how much rain hits it, no matter how much wind is blowing. Because I promise you, if he gets up, if he stands up, and all he has to do is say, peace. <laughs> Wait a second. All he has to do is say, peace, be still. I declare this to you tonight in closing. Peace. Be still. I don't know what your storm is. But I declare the words of Christ. I echo in them over you. Peace. Be still. Peace to your mind. To your emotions. To your body. I say peace to all the stress. Worry. Fret anxiety. I declare peace to those things you can't figure out. Peace be still. Water cease from beating on the boat and go calm. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for the day. We thank you for tonight. You pray for us way before we came here that our faith fails not. And I thank you for this. I know some of you are facing some hard situations. I keep sensing it. But God is saying, I pray for you. The faith that I deposit in you will not fail you. It will bring you to the end results of my desire.
<laughs> so, Lord, we love you. Thank you for all things you're doing good for us. Bless our pastor, senior pastor, Lord God, and all that he does. I ask you to continue to strengthen him and his wife. I lift up all the pastors, their wives, that are part of this ministry, all the helps that are involved, the people that have chosen to be a part. I just bless you tonight. I bless this city. I call it bless. I call our mayor bless. I call our leadership bless. I call the businesses bless. I choose to bless, not curse. For it says, when the righteous bless, the city prospers. So I say blessing to everything. God bless you. Love you. Appreciate you greatly. Let's give the Lord a hand praise, please. Um, what we want to do is put out the chairs on both sides for anyone that wants prayer. If you desire, we're here to pray for you. The pastors are here. One thing I know for sure, we believe God for you. Even when you don't believe no more, we still believe in that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. I said to you, don't be ashamed to come up here and sit in the chair. We'll come to you. Don't get angry because we ain't coming real quick. We, sometimes we're moving kind of slow. We got, we got a little older nowadays. So. But praise the Lord, we'll get to you. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Oh, come on. God is good, isn't he? Okay. God is real good, isn't he? Amen, amen. He's an awesome God. Thank him, thank him. Thank God for the praise team and all that they're doing. We appreciate it all. Yes, we do. So anyone that does want to come, please come. Those of you who do not, wish you, to, you can go ahead and be dismissed. I just ask God's angels to be with your vehicle as you go. God bless you. We love you. Thank you for listening and being a part of our service today. Just a reminder, as I was closing, sometimes it's easy to miss the instructions. But we're going to take time to give now and to pray with one another. Gather your family together now and pray together. As we have closed, we are praying together and you can pray together as well. Tithe to your local church and send a note to your elders and your pastors and thank them for all they do. If you want to give an offering or a gift at Whitehorse, you can go to whcc.net and see a lot of different options. We are grateful for your involvement, for being a part of our worship service. We look forward to meeting you and being with you again one day. You make a difference. Your sharing makes a difference. Invite people to join you because as we invite people to join us, we're sharing the gospel with more and more people in our community. It's a great tool for reaching lives right now. God bless you. Thanks for all you do. See you again.
thank you for joining us today. You being here makes a difference. We hope that you have been touched and blessed deeply by the Lord and that you will go forth with the fruit of the Spirit and minister the life of Christ. Remember to like and share. Join us through the week for daily bread. We hope to see you in the near future. Thank you. God bless you.